Hey there, fabulous viewers. Welcome back. I am thrilled to have you join us today for another exciting exploration into the fascinating world of medicine. Today's topic is celiac disease. But before we embark on this journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up if you're ready to unravel the mysteries of celiac disease with us. Now, let's get started. Celiac disease is the most common genetically related food intolerance worldwide. Celiac disease is a multifactorial autoimmune disorder that occurs in genetically susceptible individuals. Symptoms manifest when a genetically predisposed individual develops an immunological response to gliadin, which is found in gluten and related prolamins present in wheat, rye, and barley. With the consumption of food containing gluten, the tissue transglutaminase is released and modifies gliadin from gluten proteins which causes an immune reaction. Genetics plays an important role in celiac disease. Gliadin binds to HLA-DQ2 or HLA-DQ8 found on the mucosal surface. The disease primarily affects the small intestine, where it progressively leads to flattening of the small intestinal mucosa. Adults' disease is precipitated by an infectious diarrheal episode or other intestinal disease. Celiac disease is most prevalent in Western Europe and the United States, with an increasing incidence in Africa and Asia. Females are affected slightly more than males. The age distribution of patients with celiac disease is bimodal, the first at 8 to 12 months and the second in the third to fourth decades. The mean age at diagnosis is 8.4 years. There is a correlation between the age at which symptoms first appear and the kind of presentation. In infants and toddlers, the most common presentations are GI symptoms and failure to thrive, whereas, in children, minor GI symptoms, an inadequate rate of weight and height increase, and delayed puberty. Anemia represents the most prevalent FORM of presentation in teenagers and young adults. GI symptoms are more common in adults and the elderly, although they are frequently mild. The correlation between celiac disease and other conditions which include, with autoimmune disorders, type 1 diabetes mellitus, SLE, JIA, thyroiditis, genetics conditions, selective IgA deficiency, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, asthma, gastroesophageal reflux, pancreatitis, Five possible presentations of celiac disease are recognized. Gastrointestinal manifestations. Systemic and extraintestinal manifestations. Silent, damaged small intestinal mucosa with positive serology but no symptoms. Potential, positive serology and may or may not be symptomatic, but the mucosa morphology is normal. They have genetic compatibility with celiac disease and can develop the disease at a later stage. Seronegative Patients who exhibit clinical and histologic responses to the gluten-free diet and for whom other etiologies have been investigated and who have villous atrophy, compatible genetics, and no IgATTG, IgADGP, or IgAEMA are considered to have seronegative celiac disease. GI problems usually start between the ages of 9 and 24 months in pediatrics. Chronic diarrhea, anorexia, stomach distension, abdominal pain, poor weight growth or loss, and vomiting are common. If the diagnosis is postponed, severe malnutrition might happen. An introverted attitude and impatience are examples of behavioral changes. A celiac crisis, which is characterized by explosive watery diarrhea, considerable abdominal distension, dehydration, hypotension, and lethargy, and frequently by profound electrolyte abnormalities, including severe hypokalemia, can rarely develop in severely affected infants. GI symptoms in older children include nausea, bloating, constipation, and occasional diarrhea, but they are usually less noticeable. Steatorrhea can lead to the loss of fat-soluble vitamins. Dental enamel hypoplasia. Geographical tongue. Aphthous ulcers, present in adults and children. It should be highlighted that oral ulcers are neither unique nor indicative of celiac disease. However, once a patient follows a gluten-free diet, the ulcers frequently go away. Intussusception Fatigue Weight loss slash failure to thrive Anemia 
Iron deficiency anemia that is resistant to oral iron supplementation is a common extra-intestinal manifestation of celiac disease in adults. Other causes include folate, vitamin B12 deficiency, and anemia of chronic disease. Malabsorption features, vitamin D deficiency, electrolyte abnormalities. Delayed puberty. Short stature and delayed puberty. Adolescent girls with untreated celiac disease may have delayed onset of menarche. Dermatitis herpetiformis, rare occurrence in childhood and is described almost exclusively in teenagers and adults. Reduced bone mineral density. Arthritis, arthralgia, common in adults. Abnormal liver enzymes slash autoimmune hepatitis. Neurologic, headaches, migraine, peripheral neuropathy, gluten-induced ataxia, adults, epilepsy, with or without occipital calcifications. Psychiatric, irritability, anxiety, slash depression, ADHD symptoms. When diagnosing the disease. Need to be suspicious of the disease. All routine tests need to be done. If a child is symptom-free and has a first-degree relative who has the disease, they may have celiac disease. Anti-tissue transglutaminase IgA, TTG IgA, and total serum IgA must be tested together as the initial screening test. Serology Testing In 2020, the European Society for Pediatric Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition, ESPGIN, published guidelines where diagnosis to be made without the biopsy previously thought to be fundamental in demonstrating the changes in the duodenal mucosa caused by the immune reaction to gluten. Here TTGIGA levels needed to be more than 10 times the upper limit of normal and are coupled with a positive anti-endomysium antibody, EMAIGA, titer. Genetic Testing HLA DQ2.5 HLA DQ8 Duodenal biopsies by esophagogastroduodenoscopy, EGD, for the diagnosis are currently recommended whenever the diagnostic conclusion cannot be already possible with the combination of very high titers of TTGIGA and positive EMA. MARSH scoring system is utilized to classify duodenal damage in celiac disease. Type 0 or preinfiltrative stage, normal. Type 1 or infiltrative stage, increased IELs. Type 2 or hyperplastic stage, type 1, plus hyperplastic crypts. Type 3 or destructive stage, type 2 plus villous atrophy of progressively more severe degrees, denominated 3A partial atrophy, 3B subtotal atrophy, and 3C total atrophy. In cases where biopsies are obtained, patients with positive celiac serology and normal histology are considered to have potential celiac disease. When managing celiac disease, Total lifelong avoidance of gluten, wheat, rye, and barley, ingestion is the mainstay method. A gluten-free diet typically resolves within a few weeks. It's been stated that complete safety of oats, but there is a risk of cross-contamination. A trial of a lactose-reduced diet is recommended only for patients with celiac disease who have symptoms that suggest lactose intolerance, e.g., ongoing diarrhea, abdominal pain, gassiness, despite adherence to the gluten-free diet. Advise patients to eat a high-fiber diet supplemented with whole grain rice, maize, potatoes, and ample vegetables. Monitor the patient three to four months after the diagnosis with the serologic tests, physical examination, and an appointment with a dietitian can be done if more dietary advice is needed. Vaccination to prevent pneumococcal disease is recommended. Celiac disease is fully reversible, in the majority of patients, if trigger foods are avoided. However, when compliance is suboptimal, complications may occur. Complications include Osteopenia, true osteoporosis is more common in adults. Adverse effects during pregnancy, including miscarriages. Ulcerative jejunitis, colitis, refractory celiac disease, thought to be a low-grade intestinal lymphoma, but not reported in pediatric patients. GI malignancies, adenocarcinoma of the oropharynx, esophagus, pancreas, small and large bowel, and hepatobiliary tract, most commonly an enteropathy-associated T-cell lymphoma, EATL, also not reported in pediatric patients. Non-responsive celiac disease is defined as the lack of a clinical and or laboratory response to a gluten-free diet after 12 months. 
thank you so much for joining me today to learn more about celiac disease. If you or someone you know is experiencing symptoms or suspects of celiac disease, don't hesitate to consult with a healthcare professional for proper testing and guidance. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe for more content on various medical topics. Stay informed, stay healthy, and until next time, take care.